a plane's gonna fly over almost every time I hit the record button. And I feel like they're so loud. Anyway, listen, when I start these videos, most of the time I say something like, all right, my friends, welcome back. And the question went through my mind right before I hit the record button, what am I welcoming people back to? Because I really don't know. I don't have a show. I'm not a one topic kind of guy. I hate plucking on the same string over and over again. This is so boring. I don't want to be boring to myself or to you. So I just really pretty much bring to you whatever interests me at the time and just try to keep it fun. Even if it's somewhat serious, I try to keep it fun just by mixing it up. So I don't know what I'm welcoming you back to, but I hope that you do find something to think about here in all of this. Don't take any of what I'm gonna say here today too seriously. It probably shouldn't be taken um, with any degree of seriousness whatsoever. But I will give you a quote of the day and it comes to us by one of our favorite female philosophers of all time. No, that I can't, honestly, I can't think of one female philosopher. I have racked my brain trying to think of that. Isn't that kind of funny? I'm sure there are some out there, but I read a lot of philosophy and I can't think of one female philosopher. I can think of a few authors who are philosophic, but not astutely philosophical. Anyway, so this comes to us by way of Cher. Yeah. No, I'm not kidding. The one and only Cher. Uh, here's, here's what she had to say. She said, if grass can grow through cement, then love can find you at every time of your life. Well, grass does seem to find grass and weeds does seem to find a way through cement isn't that funny no matter no matter how they lay it or how much they do to it, it finds a way to keep on popping up and i guess there's a lot of analogies you could pull from that one time i was working an account i pulled up to the address and i i stayed on the road i stayed i kept the truck on the road i walked up the driveway and there was this beautiful vibrant pink flower standing straight up it wasn't it wasn't small it was it was kind of kind of long and it was just absolutely beautiful and i could tell that whoever lived there purposely gave it room so it could continue to grow because it was so unusual growing that one thing growing out of the driveway in the middle of the driveway at that so, you know, think what you want to share. You may like her, you may not. I don't really care. I'm indifferent to her, but I, I do see her point here. It's kind of interesting. If you feel like, if you feel like you're not loved or you're looking for that love in your life from somebody, you want, you want a relationship, the kind that everybody wants, I guess, uh, be patient. It could happen. I'm not saying it will. I mean, you might be hopeless, but probably not. So just keep your chin up. At least you might be a better prospect if you do. And, you know, you might be like the flower growing out of the middle of the driveway. People are going to see you and go, wow, that, there's kind of a, they stand alone. They're kind of unusual. Very bright pink. Don't be that. Don't be pink, don't wear pink. Well, I mean, pink is all right, maybe on Easter, but no. I have one pink shirt I actually like to wear. But yeah, love can find you at every time of your life, every time of your life. And the stories that I hear about people who suddenly become widows or widowers at a late time in their life and still find love, a lot of times easily, amazes me. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that I'd want to find it at this point. What would I have? What kind of hoops would I have to jump through to get that? I'm not sure. I'm glad I'm not looking for it like that. But anyway, so if share means anything to you at all, and you're looking for love, think what you will of this. Leave your comment down below. 
All right, if you wanna know what I am wearing in my beard today, it is Canyon Beard Oil and Canyon Beard Butter by Live Bearded. Yeah, if you have never tried that or them, you should, because Live Bearded is really, really good. I've been using them for a long time. I highly recommend them. I'll give you a link down below. You can use my code Kratos. You can probably imagine why. And that will save you, I think 10%, might be 15%, I don't know. Just, just, you'll find out when you check out. Yeah, you'll save some money. And I really, you know, I think that their Canyon Beard Butter, of all the beard butters I have from them, that's probably the softest one that they have. I don't know if it's that way for everybody versus the batch I got, but it is so nice that if you like, if you like any kind of pine scent at, at all whatsoever, and a lot of them seem, the same, but theirs is just so nice. I never get tired of it. Very, very soft. Very nice in the beard. Anyway, so that's what I'm wearing in my beard today. So I want to draw your attention to three apps that you need in your life that you probably didn't even know you needed. You would never guess these, well, you might. You might, you, maybe you've run across these at some point or another. Here's a Here's three apps. The first one, I can't remember if this exact app is still around. If it is, I'll put screenshots up there. Uh, but if not, there's still apps very similar to it. And um, yeah, tell me what you think of these. The first app was called Leftover Swap. Created in 2013 by Dan Newman and Brian Somerset, founders of a company called Greased Watermelon. It's a Craigslist for leftovers that allows users to post profiles of their leftover food online so that someone else can eat it. No. Listen, I think it's gross. I think it's uncouth. Unnecessary. But it's strange enough, odd enough, that I thought I had to tell you guys about it. Here's how it works. Let's say someone orders a burger, fries, and a milkshake for lunch. They finish the burger and the shake, but not the fries. Well, they probably shouldn't be eating any of those for, for lunch. Maybe the burger. And if the fries are from McDonald's, maybe then, but... In the old days, the uneaten fries would have ended up in the trash, but leftover swap allows the diner to post a photo and a description of the unwanted food on the app's database. The fries will then appear on a map of the area, and if anyone who happens to be nearby wants them, they can contact the owner and arrange to meet up. Three safety tips. From the, I don't know why I'm holding up one finger. Three safety tips. <sighs> from the leftover sw uh, swap website. Number one, don't give away any food that you wouldn't eat yourself. Number two, don't, don't take any food without knowing how old it is and making sure it was kept in proper storage. I can't see where any of this would go wrong, really. And number three, be as vigilant as you would on Craigslist. If you're vigilant, you're not on Craigslist. If something seems off, don't do it. Newman and Somerset say the app is good for the environment because it reduces waste in the process, making more efficient use of the land and resources that are used to grow food. It's obviously not for everybody. Obviously. Newman told National Radio, uh, Newman told National Public Radio in 2013, we're not going to make millions. And I, I don't know, they may have, I know there's still apps around that do this, but that's, but that's really weird. Do you need that in your life? I think you're in need of something else if you need that. Now, I think this next one is kind of interesting. All right, are you nervous about flying? Now, I have, I'm talking about commercially. When I was a kid, I went up in, a, I went up in an airplane with my dad and this, this farmer, this farmer, it was a farmer's plane. He used it to dust his crops and everything. I went up in a plane like that. And that was fun. You stay pretty low to the ground, relatively speaking. And then, as an adult, I went skydiving one time. I have this enormous fear of heights. However, I, I'm talking about inordinate, uh, fear, this inordinate fear, uh, fear of heights. But I was not afraid going up in this, you know, 13,500 feet in the sky. That, that 
for some reason, that did not bother me at all. Maybe it's because I trusted the guy I was with. At least when you're jumping out, you have uh, a plan. You have something that's going to keep you from smacking the ground, right? When you're up in a tall building, you're leaning over the edge, you have, no, you have nothing to keep you from imminent doom, right? That's why I'm afraid in a building and not, and not when I jump out of an airplane. But anyway, I've only flown commercially once. Now, it was to go from... It was to go from Tampa to Grand Rapids, Michigan. So we boarded different flights there and back. So it wasn't just like one plane, but I count it as one, one experience, right? Round trip. And I didn't like it. I don't care if I ever fly again. I just didn't like it. My brother told me that there was a time when flying was better than it is now. But I don't care if I ever fly again. Now, it may be necessary if I go overseas. So I don't know. You know, I didn't have a fear of, you know, crashing or anything else like that, but there are people who have massive anxiety about flying. So this app might be for them. It's called Am I Going Down? Released in 2015 by Vanilla Pixel, a software company in London. I think it's still around, actually. Here's what it does. It's an app for nervous, nervous travelers, but don't let the scary name fool you. Am I Going Down? is actually supposed to make users less afraid of flying. Here's how it works. Using the app is kind of like buying a plane ticket on a travel website. You enter the name of your departure and arrival airports, the name of your airline, and the type of aircraft you'll be flying. When you tap the Am I Going Down button, the app uses historical data to calculate the odds that your flight will crash. Example, a flight from New York City to Los Angeles aboard a United Airlines Boeing 737 has a 1 in 4,136,239 chance of crashing, which means you could take the flight every day for 11,332 years without crashing. A, da a daily Cathay uh, Pacific flight from Hong Kong to Los Angeles on a Boeing 777 by comparison, will crash only once in 11,146 years. Uh, for my analysis, I only include crashes where there was at least one passenger fatality, which is the relevant stat for those with a fear of flying, software developer Nick Johns told CNN in January 2015. The positive response from anxious flyers has been amazing. This one makes a lot of sense to me. Because you're, you're, you're addressing the fears that someone has and you're providing real statistical data, not speculations, not, not, not uh, warm affirmations that everyone's going to be okay. You're giving them real data to show them it's highly Im unlikely, almost improbable that you're going to crash and die in this airplane. I think that's... I think that is brilliant. And if we could do that with everything else in life, I think we would have a lot less anxiety. How could you apply that in, every, in other areas of your life? Okay, the third app. This one, if this one tickles you, you might need to seek therapy. But then again, you might need this. This, this one is called Pimple Popper. It was released by a company called Room Candy Games in 2009. There have been seven major updates since then. Version 8.6 was released in February 2014. Now, I'm going to tell you more about this and how it's used and what it does. And <laughs> You may have seen it already, but I believe this is successful because now you have those shows on TV where you can watch doctors pop pimples. And when you pop your own pimples, it's quite satisfying, isn't it? I mean, this is, this is a huge thing nowadays. And I'm not going to lie. I've, I've, no, I'm not hooked on them, but I've watched a number of them. Not a lot, but I have watched a number of pimple popping videos, even uh, earwax removal videos or whatever else they can get out of there. I've watched, I've watched a few of those. So I can see why people might become enthralled with them. It is kind of gross. It's just kind of one of those morbid curiosities, I guess. I don't know if that's the right word, but that's what I'm thinking of at the moment. So here's what this app, Pimple Popper, does. It allows you to squeeze virtual zits on your phone. Not on your phone, but you know, it's on your phone. You can squeeze virtual zits. Virtual. 
I had to look this up. It's weird. It's not like, you know, because it's virtual, it's like kind of cartoonish. Why would anybody spend their time doing that? I'd rather watch what they have on TV. Anyway, here's how it works. The app contains 12 pimply cartoon faces to choose from. Pick one and zoom in on the blemishes, then use your fingers to squeeze and pop whiteheads, blackheads, full-blown pimples, and scratch off crusty scabs, says the company. Permanent scarring on your smartphone is unlikely. The game includes a multiplayer mode for competitive zit-zapping, and Room Candy Games also sells a holiday-themed version called Pimple Popper Seasons that makes Christmas, Valentine's Day, Easter, and Halloween that much more special. I don't know. I don't know, guys. Popping cartoon zits? Not for me. But I thought you might get a kick out of it because there's got to be somebody watching this that that is going to be, their curiosity is going to be piqued and they're going to look these up. In fact, I would suggest it. Go ahead. Go to your app store. Look up the Pimple Poppers um, app, the Am I Going Down app, and the, what was the other one? Leftover Swap. I mean, what can't, listen, if nothing else, this should give you entrepreneurial ideas because this says that you can pretty much market anything. Are they going to have fingernail or toenail clipping apps next? I presume. I don't know. Maybe they already do have them. I haven't looked that up yet. Maybe I will. And if they don't, maybe I'll start it. And I'm going to trust each and every one of you, my viewers, to follow me and doing that and getting the word out. It's up to you what you do with those clippings. Might make for some good pizza toppings. I know. Instead of, I don't know, maybe you could sprinkle them in your popcorn. When I was growing up, I used to love sprinkle M&Ms in my popcorn, but this might be something new. So, I don't know. Would you be on board? Would you follow me? Would you follow me? Are you doing it now? Listen, don't forget to hit the subscribe button like I asked you to before. And tap the notification bell. Yeah. I would ask you to maybe consider donating to this channel to help support it, but I've probably lost you at this point, haven't I? Well, if I haven't, let me leave you with the last thing is, if you like this hat, this Docker's cap, you can get your own can't have mine. You can get your own by clicking on the link I have down there below. They have a wide assortment of really cool hats you can get. I think you can get like a 10, 15 percent. I don't know, some kind of a discount there too. And um, yeah, they're really cool. A lot of people like these. I get compliments on them all the time. But anyway, check all that out. I'm glad you guys have stayed around. Thanks for watching. And um, I hope to see you in the next one. All right. Have a great day, guys. In the meantime, be wise.